Hello, everyone. Uh, we are excited to be here and tell you about what we've been up to in uh, chemistry and physics simulations. Uh, this presentation will be joint between myself and my colleague, uh, Zhang Zhang, who also works in the Google Quantum AI Lab as a research scientist. And we'll be covering some learnings we've had uh, while using the Sycamore Quantum Processor in our recent experiments. So uh, let's get started. So one of the questions that guides our research is, uh, are we on a path to physical simulation advantage? And what I mean by this is, are we deriving useful computational work uh, from near-term quantum resources? So there have been a lot of NIST chemistry and physics simulations to date. I've listed some of them uh, below on the bottom of this slide, starting from 2016. And one thing I wanted to point out about these experiments is that they all involve fewer than six qubits and barely reach the accuracies required for chemistry and physics simulation. And this isn't a criticism of these works, uh, it's just to point out how difficult it is to get these experiments to actually work. So our perspective on what uh, to do with NIST experiments and in the NISC era is to focus on algorithmic primitives um, that are going to be useful now and into the fault tolerant era. And so there are a couple things that we'd, of course, like to learn along the way. Uh, we'd like to know which strategies are going to work best in terms of uh, efficient circuits, robust and extensible error mitigation. Uh, we'd also like to be able to provide our experimental colleagues with holistic device level benchmarks for an actual algorithm uh, that maybe doesn't have all of the symmetries of a random quantum circuit. Uh, and of course, uh, to benchmark how far we are from something that is actually classically intractable. So what do I mean by beyond classical circuit primitives? Uh, what I have shown here is a circuit that is one of the most efficient ways for performing uh, tautorized time evolutions for chemistry and materials Hamiltonians. And our goal is to understand how to error mitigate and optimally compile these circuit components to our quantum device to derive useful computational work. So this is a very general template. Uh, if you actually look at the blue box on the slide, uh, that general circuit abstraction is actually the QAOA cost Hamiltonian. And so the things that we learn uh, in the context of chemistry and physics simulation will usually transfer over to other fields. Uh, I'm actually going to focus on the orange box for this particular part of the talk. Uh, actually, previously we presented preliminary results for this experiment, and I'm happy to be back with you to be presenting the rest of it. Um, this particular box is a basis rotation uh, circuit. And uh, what I mean by basis rotation is a rotation of a single particle Hilbert space. And it is implemented with a quadratic Hamiltonian and that's listed above the circuit there. And we can compile this optimally in linear depth. And so there's six qubits here, and this is about a depth six circuit. Physically, what this actually corresponds to is a transformation of one set of orbitals into another set of orbitals, as I depicted uh, on the left and right uh, sides of this particular circuit. So on the left, we have uh, six hydrogens and some initial set of molecular orbitals, and we transform those via this circuit to the right. Now, if you couple that with energy minimization, uh, you actually recover the Hartree-Fock theory. Uh, and so effectively what you're doing is optimizing over optimal bases to construct a slater determinant. And this is kind of the same thing that you're doing in Hartree-Fock and, and when you solve the Cohn-Sham equations. And it's a very nice jumping off point uh, for simulating uh, more correlated models. And my colleague, Zhang, will talk about uh, how we actually extend this for interesting condensed matter uh, physics models. But of course, now the goal is to see how well we can actually implement that particular circuit primitive on our device. And so uh, kind of the simplest thing that we can do is perform a series experiments on kind of the simplest set of molecules one could imagine. And this is hydrogen chains. So these are just rows of hydrogen atoms of different uh, lengths. And so we look at systems that have six hydrogens up to 12 hydrogens, uh, and we implement this basis rotation circuit primitive. Our largest system involves uh, 72 square root I swap gates and 108 RZ gates, uh, which is about an order of magnitude larger than previous chemistry experiments. So if we simulate the electrons at six points along this binding curve of these hydrogen chains, then just look at what we get uh, right out of the box, uh, we get those orange points. And I'm plotting the energy and also the energy error along with the fidelity. Now, it might seem that that's not a particularly accurate answer, uh, but the encouraging thing here is that 
the estimates of the fidelity, which I have in that table highlighted uh, on the bottom of the slide, uh, match pretty closely to what we would expect from the fidelity estimates uh, based on the supremacy, quantum supremacy paper uh, error model. So uh, now the goal is to add on error mitigation and see how well we can implement this particular circuit on our device. So uh, the next kind of obvious thing to do is to account for particle loss and T1 error. And so the next couple of iterations of this will be adding error mitigation to account for large error, uh, larger errors in our device. So first accounting for particle loss and T1 errors, we see we have a pretty significant boost in fidelity. We can actually account for 2 2 errors uh, in this particular system uh, through this process called purification. And we can see for even our smallest systems, we're reaching 99% circuit fidelity. And then finally, uh, if we allow full variational optimization, we're performing the full VQE algorithm with layered error mitigation, we can achieve what uh, is colloquially returned to as chemical accuracy. And chemical accuracy is this nice benchmark that we have which kind of tells us that our simulation is matching what we could actually experimentally probe. And so at that point, then your computation is providing what I deem useful computational work. Uh, I think an important thing to point out is that uh, with these error mitigation schemes layered on top of each other, we can get to very high circuit fidelities for large circuits in the 99% fidelity range, but we're still barely reaching the accuracy needed for chem to claim that we're achieving chemical accuracy. And so I, what I think this points to is that ground state calculations are an area that is very hard to compete with classical methods. And John will actually talk about dynamics uh, afterwards, which is a very nice area where we can show the quantum computer uh, shine. As my last uh, slide here, uh, we wanted to kind of see how well we could put together all of these error mitigation strategies and see whether we could actually simulate a very simple chemical reaction. And so uh, with this chemical reaction, it's a simple isomerization of diazine. And there are two particular pathways that this could happen in. And so our quantum computer doing useful computational work would be telling us which particular pathway is more energetically fav favorable. And the dots here, those points with error bars, are the things that we pull off of the quantum computer uh, after our error mitigation and VQE. Uh, and it is closely agreeing with our model here. And so. I think when all of these things are combined, uh, it's showing that we can reach the accuracies needed for useful computational experiments in chemistry on a quantum computer, uh, but we still have a ways to go until we can actually extend this to, to larger systems and reach the simulation advantage regime. Uh, and with that, I think I'll turn it over to my colleague Zhang to talk about the next stages of this work. Thanks, Nick, for talking about our experiment on Hatri Fock. It is really nice to see that we can get chemical accuracy on the quantum computer. So now I am going to talk about is a quantum simulation of the Fermi Hubbard model. So uh, the Fermi Hubbard model is a standard model in condensed matter systems and uh, in quantum chemistry. It analyzes the phenomenon of high temperature superconductivity, and it is widely studied in material science and quantum chemistry. So Particularly uh, when computational scientists discover some new method, they will try it first on the Fermi Hubbard model. So, the Fermi Hubbard, the interesting uh, phenomenon of the Fermi Hubbard model is due to the competition of two terms, J and U. So, electrons like to travel, and the, the J term describes electrons hopping from one side to another side. And electrons also do not like to share space with other electrons. The U term describes uh, the energy penalty when uh, two electrons occupy the same lattice site. The matrix that we are going to use to simulate the term J is a matrix that couples uh, the 0, 1 state and uh, the 1, 0 state, which we call it K. And the matrix that we're going to simulate the onset interaction is the C phase gate, which uh, adds a, a phase on the 1 1 state only. And with these two basic gates, uh, we can uh, build a quantum circuit to simulate uh, the entire model, including uh, the initialization circuit and uh, the time evolution circuit. So Nick, just talk about the 
uh, circuit for the Hatcher fork. In the same case here, we have the same uh, circuit initialization for the spin up and spin down states. And then we apply uh, the circuit for trivalization. And uh, in the trivalization circuit, we have both uh, the K gate and uh, uh, the control phase gate simulate uh, the term J and the term U uh, separately. And each of these gates can be decomposed into our native gate, the square root I swap gate. For both the K theta gate and uh, the C phase phi gate, we can uh, use two square root I swap gate and several single qubit Z rotations and X rotations. So in the future, we expect that we will have the capability of implementing uh, this K theta gate and the C phase phi gate as our native gate. Uh, see the reference below. Uh, after you create uh, this user circuit, it is very important to uh, compile it into uh, our uh, language uh, circ, which uh, can be used to run algorithms on our quantum device. And you have to be careful of uh, aligning gates because if you don't care for the gates would be misaligned and your circuit depth would be increased. So for this example, uh, we have a subcircuit A and a subcircuit B, and uh, there's a wrong way to align them, which is described first when you create the circuit and the and append circuit A and circuit B to uh, the circuit that you created. And the correct way to do that is to use the function insert at frontier so that uh, the both uh, cir the, the circuit in circuit A and the circuit B can start at the beginning. And that shortens uh, the uh, circuit depths and reduces the execution time on the device, which means higher fidelity. So after created the circuit, you can run algorithm uh, our device, and this is an example uh, that I show for the Fermi Hub model, where we create uh, a wave packet on the spin up state and the spin down states. There's no interaction between them. Uh, the reason I used the uh, two spin states is just to show that we can calibrate away the crosstalks. As you can see, uh, the Web packets move uh, between uh, the boundaries for several times, uh, creating beautiful interference pattern, which shows that our device is simulate the coherent quantum evolution instead of some diffusive classical evolution. So to get there, you need uh, many error mitigation steps. Without error mitigation steps, uh, you will get something uh, that is uh, not desirable of uh, our quantum computer. So in the first subplot, uh, uh, the upper left uh, uh, point of the, the slides, I showed uh, the uh, center of mass position of these wave packets. Uh, the solid lines are theoretical simulations, so they are they're exact. And uh, the dotted lines are the experimental data. They're very, very noisy. Although I already used the, uh, some spin echo here and there. And uh, the first error mitigation scheme, as we did, is post selection, which was also used in the Hutchie Fox ex experiment. And after using that, we realized that our qubit may be uh, different. So we run the same experiment on uh, many. Uh, different configurations of the qubits. So we get pretty different results. And uh, uh, these results are mostly due to systematic errors. So we invented a new calibration routine. We apply this uh, calibration routine upon our uh, conventional calibration. And uh, you can see after this extra layers of calibration, the results are much better. Now. Um, Every trajectory focuses on the correct node, and uh, the error is much smaller. And the next step, we average these trajectories. So uh, the trajectory is very predictable and smooth now. And after that, we apply uh, a technique uh, which we uh, use uh, a reference circuit to rescale the result, which gives us near perfect result. Uh, from the quantum engine. 
So we average over 16 different uh, circuits. We choose a base circuit and uh, we reverse it, we exchange it, or you can flip it, we can cho choose uh, different uh, uh, qubits on the chip. And uh, the error mitigation scheme that we use is uh, very similar to uh, the, how GPS works, where you have a reference station and, in, and uh, uh, you calculate the difference of uh, your uh, real position to that reference state. That eliminates a lot of errors. Uh, in your system. And uh, uh, without uh, calibration, uh, these error mitigation tricks will not take you very far. So uh, we invented this uh, new, uh, uh, the new calibration technique that we call Flocate calibration. It works uh, by uh, measuring the uh, Flocate quasi energy instead of the expectation value of uh, of your quantum states. So the advantage is this calibration is very fast, accurate, and robust. So the gate we need to, we need to calibrate is uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, model on the uh, upper right side of the slide, where we have single qubit phases, a delta and gamma, and we have two qubit parameters, theta and phi. So we see a lot of fluctuations in these parameters. And Flocate calibration is able to characterize these uh, parameters and uh, uh, feed it to our algorithm and to compensate for these errors. So in the future, we will have this built in in our software system. So the user can create their circuit and uh, decompose it into our native circuit and our, um, and our uh, customer service will check and optimize their circuit. Meanwhile, the users can specify the, uh, the method that is uh, being used uh, for calibrating the circuit. And our circuit characterization algorithm will do that automatically for the user. And uh, uh, your idea to achieve quantum advantage is wanted. So here is the main paper of the Fermi Hubbard experiment. And we have all the code tutorial written by uh, Wojciech. And uh, the experimental data is uh, in this link below. I thank for your attention.